Westminster Confession, chapter 2, paragraph 3 on the Holy Trinity. And the doctrine of the Trinity is maybe the most central doctrine there is in the Christian faith. Actually, I was talking to my kids just the other day and I had asked them, you know, if someone asks you, what does it mean to be a Christian? What do you believe in? What would you say? And my daughter Molly, who's 10, said, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's what we believe in. And I think that's actually a really profound answer. The God who we worship as Christians is the one God, almighty, eternal God, who exists in three distinct persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So even though Westminster does not give a lot of words to this doctrine, it is central uh, to what we believe in as Christians. And so this is what it says. In the unity of the Godhead, there be three persons of one substance, power, and eternity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. So the way I would you know, often teach my children this is I would ask them these questions when they were young, and I would say, I would say, well, is the Father God? And they would say, yes, the Father's God. Is the Son God? Yes, the Son is God. Is the Holy Spirit God? Yes, the Holy Spirit is God. Is the Father the Son? No, the Father's not the Son. Is the Son the Holy Spirit? No, the Son is not the Holy Spirit. Is the Holy Spirit the Father? No, the Holy Spirit's not the Father. So, so each person of the Trinity is fully God, and yet they're distinct persons. Of course, this is a mystery. How does this work? We don't know. But the Scriptures reveal this tri-personal God to us. And we see that the defining mark of each of the persons is their relationship to one another. So the paragraph goes on. The Father is of none neither begotten nor proceeding, the Son is eternally begotten of the Father, the Holy Ghost eternally proceeding from the Father and the Son. And so the persons are defined in their relationship. The Son is begotten of the Father and the Spirit uh, is, is proceeding from, from the Father and the Son. And, and it's like the Spirit is the love between the Father and the Son. The Father loves the Son and the Son loves the Father in the Spirit. And so relationship is at the center of the God that we worship. And that's what the Bible says, that God is love. And C.S. Lewis says, if God is love, love requires more than one person. So if the deep reality behind the universe is love, the God who made the world must be more than one person, three persons, in fact, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And, uh, and what that means is that they are distinct persons. And so when we try to understand the, the Trinity, we don't say things like, well, you know, Nate is a father to his children and he's a son to his parents. You know, in one way I'm a father and another way I'm a son that doesn't work because I'm still just one person. So that's not how the Trinity works. That God's sometimes the Father, sometimes the Son, sometimes the Holy Spirit. It's also not that, that Jesus is, is the, the greatest of the Father's created beings. No, He is equal with the Father, equal in power and glory and eternity. He is the God who is the Father's express image of the Father. And so what we see in the scriptures, we see things like, well, the God of the Bible is the Creator. And so is the Father, the Son, or the Holy Spirit the Creator? Well, all, each of them is the Creator. So the Father created heaven and earth, and yet He created all things through the Son. And then we read in Genesis that, that at the creation, the, the Holy Spirit was hovering over the face of the deep, and it, and it was through when God sends forth His Spirit that things are created, that it says in Psalm 104. And so the Father, Son, and Spirit, are each one of them is cr Creator. Or you look at the Savior. Who's the Savior? Well, it's the Father who so loved the world that, that uh, he, he gave us salvation. But how did He do it? Well, He did it by sending His Son. And His Son is the one through whom we have salvation. But, but how do we uh, receive the benefits of all that Christ has done for us? Well, the Holy Spirit is the one who applies the, the grace of Jesus to us. So the Father is the Savior, our Savior, the Son is our Savior, and uh, the Holy Spirit is saving us from our sin and our unbelief and from death and, um, and, and bringing us back to God and giving us faith. And so, or you take 
uh, that God is the judge. Well, the Father is, is the great uh, judge over creation, but it says in Romans 2 that he will judge the secrets of men's hearts um, by Jesus Christ, according to Paul's gospel. So it is through Christ that the Father will judge the nations. And, and who is the one who searches men's hearts and knows the secrets of men's hearts so that they may be judged? Well, of course, it's the Holy Spirit who searches out all things. And so the Father is the judge and the Son is the judge and the Holy Spirit is the judge. And so in every way, each person is fully God, but yet they are three distinct persons. And so that is why we say our God is love. And so here is a discussion question for you. How does it shape our spiritual life to believe in a God who is a community and a God who is love?